We do have, and fortunately I have a, a partner who has uh, become well-versed in this uh, idea of cryoablation uh, for the geniculate nerve around the knee, which works <clears throat> in certainly there are a subset of patients who go through knee replacement, as I'm sure you've seen, that they, they still have pain regardless of the fact that they have a great looking x-ray, the knee might even move and, and work pretty normally for them. They still have a lot of pain and he has a way that he can actually basically block the pain in those nerves to the knee seems to last for about a year, uh, but the good news is, is it can be repeated, so it doesn't right. require pills or narcotics, but it's also a great bridge for somebody who's younger, maybe doesn't have really severe joint damage, but has a lot of pain that's limiting them, and has some, some risk factors that they need to work on before surgery, so, you know, uh, and you can take maybe a, somebody in their late 40s, go through one of these cryoablation procedures, you might be able to get them to their 50s before they're really ready for surgery. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've had several patients yeah. that have done it in conjunction with <clears throat> manipulation under anesthesia or sure. kind of prophylactively. Um, but for the people watching, can yes. you explain to them in plain language exactly what you're talking about? Sure. So the, the technology is it's called Cool Leaf, uh, but the idea is, is the nerves that supply the sensory area to the knee. So what we call the geniculate nerves, and they run on the inside and outside part of the knee. They are the main... Uh, sensory fibers that, that, that tell your brain when your knee has pain. And what uh, my partner is able to do is he does it in a two-phase uh, uh, session. So phase one, he just simply injects lidocaine into those areas and he localizes it with ultrasound. So he knows he's getting the nerve, uh, hitting the area properly. And if patients have a great response, you know, if for several hours after that lidocaine, which is just like Novocaine when you go to the sure. dentist, it certainly wears off but for several hours you have you know, virtually no pain, then going back in for the full cryoablation where he actually goes in, uses a what's called a radio frequency probe, and that probe goes in and it touches the nerve and, it, and it's basically a way to cold freeze that nerve. And it's, it's kind of like a reset button for the nerve and it'll basically stop firing and or at least certainly reduce its firing when it comes to pain. And the, you know, the good news is, is that those nerves <clears throat> don't control any muscles, right. uh, they don't control any of the, the uh, uh, critical functions of the knee, it's really just the pain response. So um, it's, it's, you're not really missing anything from a functional standpoint when they're not working other than the pain, yeah. uh, which is a really great uh, process. There's, there's a few docs in the area that are doing it, I know we have one, and I know I think there's some at Christ uh, through their pain management clinic that are using it. The trend on whether to do it before surgery as a way to do surgery with less pain, yeah, it's a thought process. It hasn't really research-wise come out that way or okay. shown like a reduction in narcotic use or really great pain scores after surgery because you know, it's still it's still major surgery. You know, I'm still going in there with a saw, cutting bone. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, there's only so much you can do. But for those patients who either need a bridge. Uh, to get to where they're safer for surgery, need to put things off. Uh, get and 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 for those who are even after surgery, just you know, unhappy because they still have pain, which unfortunately in the knee replacement world happens probably almost ten percent of the time, especially in the younger population. Yeah. So uh, I think that's an important tool that we've developed over the last few years uh, that gives some people at least a, a way to to live functionally with less pain. And, you know, it's, it's, it's procedural, but it's not surgical, so low yeah. risk. And so for those of you watching who might have missed it, the first part is kind of the test to see if it's going to work. The lidocaine, yes. it's the, the test, let's see if we get a result, and if we get a positive result, then we actually do the procedure. And the procedure isn't a permanent procedure. It, it does kind of, the right. nerve regenerates. Is that, would that be the right terminology? That is correct. It'd be the right terminology. It does regenerate. It, it tends to last somewhere between the six month to a year category from what sure. they're seeing in most of the research. And I mean, it is a technology that's really only been utilized for about the last two, three years. So we don't have a lot of you know, 10 year data on this right. stuff, obviously, but um, it's certainly a reversible procedure. I mean, knee replacement is not reversible. Right. As I tell patients, you know, once I catch the bone, it's gone. There is no yeah. reverse button. Once you're ready to jump off that bridge for surgery, you know, it's like I said, it's, it's both feet. You've got to be all in.